I found out why she's not answering my calls, part 2. Hi there, welcome to Reddit Goat Channel. Today we are going to have another unbelievable cheating story. But before we get started, please hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so that you won't miss any of our daily cheating stories. After dating for 4 years, I showed up at her work one day at community college, she had dropped out of school downtown where we used to live near. She was upset that I would show up there on her break. I brought her flowers. She kissed me and said we would talk after work. We met at a bar. She broke up with me, citing that I always tried to hold her responsible for the wrongs she committed over our relationship, and needed a no-pressure support system to be able to heal from addiction. Whatever, yeah, I was frustrated that she was paying everyone back but her boyfriend, the person she was supposed to love. Then it hit me, she's a user. Of course she didn't need to pay me back, I was her piggy bank. Mentally, I was swimming. I threw the ring down on the table, paid my check without a word, and left. She blew up my phone for 20 minutes before I picked it up. She apologized again about the breakup, and said we could still see each other. She also offered me $1,300 cash, an amount her parents were willing to pay me for the methadone treatment I fronted for her when they didn't know she was getting help. Their insurance took over for the treatment after that I think. I viewed the $1,300 as a consolation prize, it was never about money to me and her offering me money just made me feel that much worse. I declined it. I shouldn't have. It would have been nice to have. We did the FWB thing. Over the summer she came over and would sleep over. One morning my dad came downstairs and I had to block his vision near the stairs, he goes, so you're going on that blind date tonight right? No dad, it's more just people going out with friends. She was pissed. Pissed that I would go on a date with someone else. She kind of gave up that right when she broke up with me. She tried to come over again. I told her no. At that time, I was dating this other woman Colleen for 10 days and wanted to see where it was going, so it wouldn't be fair that I kept sleeping with her. She wouldn't take no for an answer. She drove to my house at 1.30am and pounded on my door until I opened it. I sat in her car and calmly explained to her that I was now dating someone else. She cried, as if she was losing something. Something she had never treated right. Something she had no right to after all that had happened. She left and I went back inside and went to bed. Sleeping with her after we broke up was the most empty experience of my life. I remember it distinctly, me looking at her during the act and just thinking, what am I doing? I realized I've just missed being close with someone. We all miss this. This is normal. But when the person we love is the problem it's harder to see. We often have compulsions that go against our best interest. About six months into my relationship with Colleen, I'm sitting in bed at 2 a.m. I got a call from my ex. Colleen tells me to pick it up. I put it on speakerphone. It was her, crying. She told me that she was raped at a party, and that's why she broke up with me. I felt for her. I really did, if this was even the truth. I felt bad for disbelieving a possible rape victim. She told me she didn't think I'd take it well and that she needed to break up to get space in our relationship because she was dealing with her sexual assault. It didn't add up. It was user behavior. She was trying to do anything she could to try and get back in. I wasn't having it. I've never been put in the position to disbelieve a rape victim. And had to disbelieve her that day. She was just such a manipulative person during our relationship, I knew that I knew better at that moment. She wanted to hurt me, plant the seeds of what if. Cheaters are terrible people. They put you in positions you never think you'll be in. A lot of my story doesn't have to do with cheating, but this woman has cheating down in her bones. If it serves her, she will do it. If it makes her feel better, she will do it. If you find yourself staring down the barrel of a shitty situation because of someone else, you should leave. You are signing yourself up for pain. Looking back, after she cheated on me, that should have been it. But I signed myself up for the pain. It's part of me now, part of my experience. And I will never stay a single day with another cheater again. Here's the second story. My mother has cheated in the past. About eight years ago, she slept with my friend's stepdad, which completely tore us apart. Not only that, my mom was absolutely best friends with her mother as well, so very backstabber. A couple of years later, when I was 13 my mom met this couple. And she absolutely adored them, and was best friends with them. The woman in the relationship, let's call her Jennifer, was my mom's new best friend. And I grew to love her and see her as a second mother. 
I was so happy that my mom had a best friend that came over all the time since I enjoyed her company very much. But of course, my mom slept with her husband and everything went down the drain again. This is when I discovered my parents had a bit of an open relationship, and slept with other people. This was sickening to 13 year old me. Now this may not sound like cheating, but it grew to be. It wasn't just sleeping with each other, she fell in love with him, and fell out of love with my dad. But instead of divorcing, they stayed together. She promised me she would never do it again, and that they were going to work on their marriage. This whole thing ruined my relationship with my parents, and I had to go to family therapy for a very long time. I grew to almost hate my parents, and resent them. But then I got older, and forgave them for not being perfect. I was happy they were figuring things out, and they gained my trust. Fast forward, my mom, 46, had met a younger couple on Facebook in a corgi page, we have a corgi puppy. Let's call them Matt, 26, and Caitlin, 26. They had a corgi, and my mom wanted to meet up with fellow corgi owners. They agreed to meet up, and everything was good. I was a little irked by the fact they were so young, but they began coming over constantly and I, of course, grew to like them. To be fair, Matt looks a lot older than he does, and acts like it. However, Katie looks college-ish, which I mention now so it makes sense later. Anyways, fast forward and they began coming over at least three times a week with their dog. I had no problem with it. My mom posts on her Snapchat almost every day, and she posts them all the time. My friends began to poke fun at it, and I did too. Things transitioned into my mom taking our corgi, leaving our other dog at home, and not coming home and staying at their house. I thought it was weird, but gave it the benefit of the doubt. I'm gonna skip around to around a week ago. My mom went over to their house again, and I was fine. But then around 12 a.m. she came home. With Matt. She explained him and Caitlin got into a screaming fight, and he needed to be away from her. Okay, I thought. The next day we went out to lunch with my family, my dad's parents and aunt. And she brought Matt along, which was a bit odd. Then a couple days later I overheard her asking my dad if he hated her. It sounded like she was almost asking for forgiveness, and the pit in my stomach grew. She then went outside in the freezing cold to FaceTime Matt. That's when I knew, that's when I knew. My dad confirmed my fear, and I sobbed out of pity for my dad. I acted like I didn't know my mom, but her conscience crept up on her and she told me everything. She said that her, Caitlin, and Matt used to have threesomes. And my dad was okay with it, so I didn't know what to think. At this point, I was just wishing it was just sex. But it's worse, she's in love with him. She's in love with him, and not my dad. I felt sick. Matt lives far away, and she spoke about how he wants to get a house in our school district, and have rooms for me and my brother. Yes they came over all the time, but I barely knew him. I felt sick. My mom is defending her actions by saying she was unfulfilled in the relationship. She also always defends sleeping with her friend's husband slash boyfriends by saying their relationship wasn't good for them. Also this time, she berated Caitlin. Said all these bad things about her, how she was mean in the relationship. Sure, she might have been. But it sounds like my mom is trying to convince herself she's not at fault. This is the third time she backstabbed a woman friend, and had sex with her boyfriend slash husband. My mom is constantly texting Matt now, all the effing time. She's calling him, and everything. Just strutting around the house, and it hurts me. I don't know what to do, and I'm trying my best to be mature. As I'm typing this, my mom didn't come home last night. She's at a hotel with him. What the hell do I do? This guy she's in love with is only 10 years older than me. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell for any future cheating stories.